hello everyone. Uh, my name is Irwan Shahrir. I'm a Java developer. I come from Norway. I work at the Capgemini in Norway. How many of you are Java developers? How many of you like Kotlin? Nice. I was born in this island of Java in Indonesia. How many of you? <laughs> right, that's one way for me to make me feel special. But I may do some uh, wrong move now because I'm going to talk about Kotlin and then I probably will not be able to use that opening line anymore. Uh, I've been working with uh, a appli uh, payment application that is part of the whole internet banking system for a uh, commercial sector in Norway by m our client Sparbank One. And a couple of years ago, we finished modernizing the application uh, to comply with the ISO 20022 standards uh, about the financial industry message scheme. And I know the code very well because I've been working uh, for three years with that. So when Kotlin got interesting, uh, I decided to learn about it, but I don't want to do the dance, the usual dance by starting in the hello world and then create with the toy program to learn the syntax. My idea was, can I learn by using a production code? And uh, thanks to JetBrain, it is possible to do that. And of course, I have to say to my boss, I say, I'm going to refactor it. So this is actually my strategy of learning a new language with a code that matters. And my approach is when I need to know something from the code I, I'm working on, I look at Google or their documentation and then come back just enough to continue. So it's kind of an evolutionary learning. It's my approach to Kotlin. Uh, the building blocks of the application is quite straightforward. We have a front-end layer, which we'll, we will not talk about today. We have the REST layer, where we have resources and DTO that provides data to the front-end. And then we have the business layer, which has services and uh, domain objects and an adapter to connect to an exter external core bank services. We actually depended, uh, depends heavily on those. We can actually say we are just as good as they are. If they send us crap, then we will just crap it. So, uh, the most common patterns in the code base is mapping between the external core surface to the BIS, to the BIS uh, business layer, and then uh, between the business layer and the rest layer. It looks really straightforward. Why can I claim that this is a complex and uh, large application? It is, uh, the complexity arises from the large number of the mapping and bo from both uh, sides. And uh, sometimes uh, the external objects can be really large and they are inconsistent with each other. And then we have to do lots of jumping here and there to make it meaningful for us. And lastly, some edge cases require us to use the ex uh, multiple external services that return two separate objects that actually is not designed to do for each other, and then we have to manipulate it for, to sorting or something else. And the part of the code that I will show you in this last 12 minutes are from the module of group payment. Of course, it's a group of payments. It can be a salary list, it can be payment list, and it can be a charge list. Let's start refactoring a test class. This is the, I chose this one because it has only one test method. And what it does is actually it creates a group payment and then it creates a group payment template, put the name, put the account number, and then take a give a type and set them to the group payment. In this case, it's a payment list. And then it creates a map of one payee template, add a uh, necessary data, and then put them to the, group, uh, to the group payment. And then create a date object, 
and set to the group payment. So this is our test data. And then the mapper will need an agreement ID and that group payment object to map it into the list create. List create there is an object that is exposed by external services when we want to create a payment list. <clears throat> and of course, is it, it, it's a test. You need to make assertion whether you actually map the correct data. Here is the same class in Kotlin. You can actually just copy and paste the previous class, and IntelliJ will convert it for you. But you will be missing out a, lot, a lot because uh, that's where ac the actual learning is. So what do you notice here? There is no semicolon. It's so refreshing when it's gone. <laughs> and let's break it down. This is how you instantiate a class uh, in Kotlin. You just see the, t uh, the type name once. Unlike Java, you have to do back and forth. This is a calendar, and then, oh, it's a calendar. And, uh, oh, let's make a new calendar. Here, you can just go one way, create a value with the name calendar mapper, and then off type XML Gregorian calendar. It's very straightforward. It looks even better for a type that, requires par uh, that has parameterized constructor. Unlike Java, of course. And then, <clears throat> it's, it's a special case in this test. I, I, I choose to uh, make an alias of it because in Kotlin, kiss, uh, is is a reserved word. But you can always use the back ticks there if you feel comfortable about it. And then, property in a class can be accessed by its name directly. So if you have a long, if you have a property that has a property that has another property, you can call them all by a set of dots a chain of dots operation instead of a get methods operations. This is another win for me. And calling a, a, a collection by its index, by using the brackets like an array, it feels much more uh, natural than get index. See, there is maybe you can say that Oh, there is not so much change, but actually there are. Besides all those uh, the, the dro uh, that we drop the new and then the semicolon, we can actually call a Java class from a Kotlin class without doing anything else uh, uh, but, uh, besides making it available in our code base in the Maven or in your build script. Let's get beyond the basics. I always think, is it, isn't it nice if you do assertion and then you put, you align all the fields that you need to, that you want to test on the left and then all the expected value on the right. <laughs> Kotlin uh, makes it uh, possible for you by using two features here. The first one is an extension function, check it out later, and then an infix function. Uh, you have to define uh, to, you have to define these functions for each type that you are going to test. Uh, luckily, in our code base, most of them are strings or numbers, or in some cases, in a type. So most of the time, you you will end up with a few of this somewhere else. Uh, I usually decide to put them in the same class when it's not that long. I haven't, found, I haven't come up to the case where I need to create a separate class for all this infix function. Besides, uh, the advantage to have it in the same class, when your test case failed, it will refer to the same file instead of making you jump to another file. And I want to illustrate that you can actually extend any object. This object, the self-service ag agreement ID, is from our common library in the bank outside our code base. And this one is a Kotlin string. This one is a payment list type from our external services. This one, another uh, from our uh, library. And then this is from the big Java Big Decimal. So they look, they, they, they are treated uh, in the same way. 
if you want, you can also add an extension property to the integer class, the Kotlin integer class, to return a big decimal. You just need to manipulate the get method to return a big decimal so that you can write 100.bd instead of big decimal 100. If it makes sense for you, it's probably useful to take. The next thing I want to show is to uh, convert the map itself. Pretty straightforward. This is the method that we are uh, testing. We tested earlier. We, we extract all this information, the template, template type, and due date, and put them to the payment list object from the external, and then add it to uh, one special here. We need to map uh, our domain type to the external type using a switch. And then, if it is a charge list, we need to get an extra information. And then we create a, a list create object with the agreement ID and the payment list create to the backend service. This is the mapper in Kotlin. I uh, deliberately use the same layout from the Java because I like doing this. If you do this in your work time, and then you, you get a great joy out of it, and then you are hoping that nobody else is watching, probably we, need, we, need, we should talk. <laughs> I think we should get help. It's a disease, really. What is new in that uh, conversion? Instead of using switch, we use uh, the Kotlin construction when. It looks like that, a statement like that, and it's just the simplest form of uh, like switch in, uh, in, in other C-like languages. When you do this, uh, IntelliJ will suggest lifting out the return, and then it um, render the when as, as an expression now. And the value of the satisfied branch is the value of the overall expression, and then Notice that there are no else there because the compiler know that all the possible condition is already covered. So it's no longer there. You can check if you move, uh, if you comment one of those and then you'll get a re uh, an error message. The domain classes, I have only three minutes left, I uh, will show you. We don't need getter and setter in the domain uh, class. It's just simple Pojo, and it's really cool. I, I, I try to see that and that, because I know this is a group payment that has three properties. That's it. Something special that, that you can check it later. This is how Kotlin do generics. Instead of extends, they use out. And that is super for, uh, in for super. Another similar uh, mapping between uh, Kotlin and Java dom Pojo. Something special here. These two uh, methods that actually just encapsulate a collection operation. I decided not to convert it because Kotlin has a better way, better uh, collection operation. Um, I don't have time to show it here. Uh, there is a common thing that I found in my code base that we always do this. In Kotlin, you don't need that because you can actually initialize, you have to initialize with a mutable list of method that will return an empty list. This is another uh, pattern that I like. When you want to check the elements, you assert two elements of a collection, you can do it with a scope function let. And then by using the is equal to that we created earlier, we can actually make this test into this test. Which one do you like to read better? And you can imagine I will span this before after again. So, so far, I managed to, to try to convince you to use Kotlin by using only these basic features. You can check it out later. And learning by refactoring is actually a thing. It's not just my bullshit to my boss. Uh, I can learn it in context and then a domain that matters to me, I get paid with this code base. So when it's better, maybe I get paid better. And there is an instant gratification beside this before and after obsession. You can also motivation to connect. Well, how can I make this code even better? But there is a catch 
because you are only as good as the potential of your code base. My code base didn't have a lot of computation, so I didn't have, I didn't have a reason to explore the performance. I didn't have a reason to, to use coroutines and something like that, all the exotic things that Kotlin over. So I still don't know that. And these are the resources that I use. Yes, time is up. Just use it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great talk. Thank you. Thanks. Great talk. Thank you. Do you um, tweet the uh, presentation? Sorry? Do you tweet the presentation? Can you offer us the Do you want it? Yeah. I think it will be available on video. Yeah. On video. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Or just uh, drop me a line if you okay. need. That would be nice. Thank sure. You just a suggestion. Just many of the things that you demoed come with the latest Java. Uh, do a disclaimer that you are doing to show in Java 8, not yeah. Java 11. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. For your assertions, but most of those things. But. Uh, even you have Longbox that does all of that for you about not having get us unsettled. But then you have this annotation there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> this is a suggestion. Yeah, and I Kotlin know. Kotlin is great, and I like Kotlin. But if you do the disclaimer that you have old code base, sure. and some of these improvements are already ported to Java, but Kotlin is still ahead of Java. Yeah, thanks for the suggestion. Okay. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>